Okay, I'm still on Eugene Gendlin and the experience and the creation of meaning idea that to do with the felt sense. And I guess I'm just trying to think of it in terms of its relationships to other bodies of thought, other ideational concepts and structures to see if I can uh, enrich the idea for myself, really. And there are several things I think that the, felt, the idea of the felt sense borrows from or uh, seems to collide with. Uh, the first is that um, that sense that you get in, I think it's Merleau-Ponty's writing, but it might be somewhere else as well, which is to do with uh, the phenomeno phenomenology of perception, I guess, in which uh, perceiving has a kind of, uh, is an embodied practice. When we um, conceptualize something, through acts of, of sensory perception, those are uh, multivalent, um, multisensory enacted processes. We're putting ourselves in certain kinds of performative relationships to uh, the objects of our experience. Object isn't the right word, but the, the, the phenomena of our experience. Uh, so there seems to be some kind of relationship there. I haven't really got to that properly yet. Uh, more specifically, I think there's a relationship, I, I believe, between the felt sense and something that comes out of ultimately William James, I guess, but a, a tradition that follows that, which I think also encompasses Mother Ponty, which is to do with uh, what feelings are. And here I'm talking about feelings as in a kind of emotional tone. Uh, our, uh, God, I can't use any other word apart from feelings and emotions on this one. So it's, it's in that particular area, which, uh, according to James, and indeed James Lang, um, c comes out of uh, embodied experience. So I think he says something like that feelings, an emotional state, emotional set, is the conscious awareness, conscious perception of uh, physical um, physical things happening in the body. And he gives the example of fear, for example. Uh, a, 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 a kind of crude reading of fear prior to James Lang's theories uh, would be that, you know, you see a tiger, you recognize a tiger as a dangerous um, phenomenon, you get scared. Uh, as a result of your getting scared, certain things happen in your body, your adrenaline system kicks in and you run. Uh, even saying that actually it reveals its the flaws. What James Lang would say, and I'll from that idea, is that you see the tiger, certain things happen in your body as a direct, some somatic result, a response to that sight. Uh, your pulse rate elevates, your adrenaline starts flowing, uh, various readiness potentials start in the muscles, you start to. Uh, uh, blood gets drawn from certain parts of the body and put into other parts of the body. A whole series of responses are made which are completely somatic and you probably even start to run at that point and it's and some part of your consciousness if that's the right word, is kind of monitoring that uh, that somatic response and kind of perceiving it kind of giving a kind of overview of that complex somatic picture of changes in your body and reads off that um, somatic process as fear. So fear results from the changes that take place in the body, including beginning to run. So you might even start to run before you feel frightened. Uh, and here I'm reminded of that other more very basic, um, almost I guess instinctive response when you put your hand on something hot, put your hand on a hot plate. Uh, what usually happens is you go ow and bring your hand away. But what's uh, apparently happening with that, and you feel pain, but what's apparently happening with that is that your, uh, as soon as you put your hand on the hot plate, there's a series of uh, somatic, somatosensory, uh, sensory motor changes start to take place. Um, nerve endings start firing, muscles start being activated. Um, other start, processes start in your body to do with damage control and uh, and, and even the muscles that start to retract the arm start to retract. And it's only at that point, once all that information has been passed up to your, I guess, some part of your sensory cortex, 
that you're um, that you experience it as pain. So you've actually started to withdraw your hand, and your body started to do all these things prior to your feeling pain. And it has to be prior to because pain is the recognition, the perception of those bodily responses. Uh, so what's the relationship between that stuff and Eugene generally? Well, I think what's going on, I don't know if there's a relationship or not, actually, but it seems to me there's a quite likely relationship between this uh, uh, constant, ongoing, uh, somatic relationships with the world. The two examples I've given, you know, running away from tigers and putting your hand on a hot plate, are obviously high-profile, easily recognizable somatic profiles that we can very easily perceive as particular emotional states to the point where we even give a name to them, like fear or pain. But uh, we're undoubtedly having that the whole time. Part of routine consciousness and routine awareness more generally is um, undoubtedly an awareness and a monitoring of all of the various somatosensory and sensory motor activities that are taking place. So all the time I'm going on this walk, uh, there are some reactions taking place on the soles of my feet against the ground, which, um, which, which uh, are being put alongside the various sights that I'm seeing, the inputs from my eyes, the inputs from my ears, the distant sound of the road, the sound of the water running next to me. Uh, all the various other inputs and the perception of all those inputs. It might not have a, 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 a name like pain or fear, but it's, uh, it's undoubtedly constructing some kind of um, collective emotional, let's say, res uh, res response, which um, I think has a relationship to the felt sense. I think that's one of the things that Eugene Gendling is talking about. I think it's that kind of felt sense. And it's not just the external world. I mean, Gendling's use of the felt sense in something like focusing, for example, his therapeutic technique, is... Uh, is one in which you can kind of um, provoke uh, somatic, somatic, somatic responses in the body by asking oneself particular questions. So you think of a particular question or you ask a, a question like, how am I doing? Or something like that. And, uh, and the body responds to that uh, suggestion in certain ways and by careful monitoring of the responses, the, the felt sense, you can get a kind of a grip on what's going on in your somatosensory system, which will give you some information about how you feel about a certain situation. In that particular case, how am I doing? Well, I'm doing all right. Or how am I doing? Well, actually, there's a tiger in front of me. I should probably run away now. Or how am I doing? Well, I've got my hand on a hot plate. Um, or something much more subtle, like how am I doing? Well, I'm standing in a field with a couple of dogs. All the various other things that are accompanying that.